My name is Tiger and I'm going to show you today how to glaze your cabinets. We're going to start out by cleaning your cabinets really well. I also hit mine with a deglossing compound. What I used was peso. Yeah. I also hit mine with a light sand. It does not have to be a vigorous sand, just something to dull down the finish. Once I got done with that, I removed handles and I started my priming. Now if you want to glaze your cabinets that's already stained instead of painting and then glazing, then you can do that. You're just going to use something like a burnt umber, a Van Dyke brown is very popular, something to give it a little bit of character. As you can see I've already started glazing a little bit here. It's in these grooves. You just want to put a lot in there and wipe off. And then once you're finished you hit it with a light lacquer. It can be a polyurethane, which is what I prefer. The trick to using aerosolized clear coats is you want to start off your surface. So you spray onto it. Instead of starting directly on it, which will create a pool of clear coat. So start off, spray on, hit those areas in long strokes. And then you just let them sit for a couple days and let them cure out and you're good to go. Now if you want to paint your cabinets, I use Benjamin Moore's Advanced Primer, which is a great adhesion primer and it levels out very nicely. Whenever priming, I also sand between coats. That helps with the smoothness. Next, I hit it with the Advanced in the Satin. Satin is a little more forgiving than a high gloss finish because if you have a high gloss finish, you're going to see a lot of your imperfections. Now, there may not be a lot of imperfections if it's a painted surface already, but if you're going from a stained to a painted, then sometimes it's better to go with a lower sheen. When priming, you want to sand between coats, but you also want to make sure that you use a quality paintbrush. I use the Wooster FTP. It's got a nice taper to it, which helps flow. And once you start priming, you want to hit the accented areas first, any grooves, indentions, any accents to the door. Then you can start painting after that. So you're going to hit these areas first, and then you're going to let that dry. You might sand down the edges a little bit if there's any higher edges. And then you're going to go in long strokes all the way down, all the way across, all the way down, and across again. Sand between coats and then apply another coat. Sand again and then you're ready for your top coat. I used Benjamin Moore's Advance in Satin and I used the color Simply White. I am using the Van Dyke Brown for the white. This is Simply White by Benjamin Moore again and this is Van Dyke Brown Glaze by Gemini. I'm going to load that up and again I'm going to take it into the grooves. Don't be alarmed because it may seem like a very dark color, but only a small amount will be showing. You're going to wipe off the excess, so don't freak out. And I'm wiping it into just the corners. Depending on the door that you're working on, you may want to do the outside and inside of the decorative piece. I'm going to start wiping off the glaze now. Definitely gives it a more aged look. This is a great idea for people that have painted cabinets and turned out that the cabinets are just too light. This will be an easy project to start on without having to paint the whole thing. I'm leaving the excess in the corners. Depending on how much glaze you want and how much color you want to add to the cabinets, you can play with that. So you can see I'm leaving a fair amount and we'll be adding more. This also takes away from the starkness of how white it is.
put. I'm going to hit some of the outsides just to give you an idea of how that would look. And just the grooves. And then I'm going to start wiping off the excess. Don't be afraid if it gets too messy. It's always wipe it. You can always wipe it off. As you can see, I finished putting my glaze onto the white part of the cabinet. I did the outside and also the inside. And then once you're finished with this, I'm using interior oil-based polyurethane by Old Masters in an aerosol. The trick when doing these aerosols is you don't want to start on the cabinet. You want to start out and then go on. Keep spraying and never stop directly above the cabinet. Always keep your finger on and pushing down before you hit the cabinet or any kind of surface. Next, I'm going to do the Kona. And I'm just going to go ahead and use the Van Dyke Brown again. Painted cabinets are very in right now. Blues, browns, any kinds of colors will go on cabinets. So. If you feel like being creative with your kitchen, a great update is adding some color to your cabinets. And then I'm just going to start adding the glaze. This is a great color for all kinds of cabinets. Van Dyke Brown is a very popular glaze. As you can see, I'm hitting the grooves again. Really thicken it up. Don't be afraid to use too much because you're just going to end up wiping a lot of it off in the corners really well. Really coat those corners. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and start wiping again. Wiping off the excess. You can leave as much on as you like. If you like a thicker line in the corners, I'll show you how. You just want to add just a little bit of pressure and then hit that painted area, but leave a good chunk of it. So if you want a little bit thinner, like over here, or if you want thicker, like in this area, you can add as much glaze as you want. It's all about personal preference. I'm going to hit some of these outside areas again. This is, can also be done on vanities, armoires, any kind of furniture that has some grooves and some corners. You just want to add a little bit of an aged look. After this, I'm going to show you how to distress a little bit. Okay, I finished with the Kona. It's a little bit of an aged look. Looks pretty nice. Now, to get the distressed look, which is very popular right now, you're going to want to hit corners anywhere that seems like it would get the most traffic. Um, anywhere like handles, stuff like that. I'm going to concentrate on the edges. I'm mainly hitting the corners, just kind of sanding around those areas.
as you can see, I'm hitting mainly primer. If you just give it a little more of a sand, you're gonna hit get through that. I am using a 150 grit sanding sponge. After you hit your cabinets with primer, a 150 around there is going to be plenty just to knock down some of those edges. I'm going to hit the outer corners now of the cabinet just to give it a little bit of character. those corners. You can see these areas that I've hit gives it a little bit touch of class. As you can see this is our primed cabinet door. It's nice and sanded, nice and smooth. This is our brown door with the Van Dyke brown glaze by Gemini. This is our Simply White with the Van Dyke Brown Glaze. And this is our stained door that was already finished with, another, with a glaze to it. If you think about updating your hardware, one thing you might try first instead is cleaning them really well. As you can see, this is the same handle. This is the clean, this is the old version and this is after cleaning it with goof off. This can really change the look of your handles and give it a nice update. If you ever have any questions when glazing a cabinet door, you can always come into Dugan's Paint and we'll walk you through the process. Thanks.